Hey, are we on? I think we're on. Fuck. Hey. Hey, Internet, YouTube, welcome back to the Shimmy Show. <laughs> Shimmy Triple X here. Follow me on Twitter, Shimmy Triple X. Instagram, Shimmy Smack Beb. I'll put it on the description if you don't know already. I am the one and only Shimmy. Hi. This is going to be a probably lengthy show, so uh, fuck it. If you don't want to watch a long show, go to another one. This is my laptop webcam, so I'm hoping that the uh, audio comes out correctly this time. I turned off the AC outside, and I realized the last show you couldn't hear shit, so whatever. So I'm going to touch on a variety of topics. You guys might want to go grab a motherfucking drink or something. I'm going to do the same. and uh, It's just a casual day here. i got to clean up. i got some shit to get off the camera, some more stuff to upload, and uh, yeah. So, welcome to the Shimmy Show. Fortunately, there's no time limits on YouTube, so it's like, whatever. They're going to change that one day, I guarantee you. But until then, hello. Hello, motherfuckers. <laughs> Got your ass. So, yeah. And this show is sponsored by Doriamon. <laughs> Doriamon is a cat type robot and it's like the only cartoon that I watch here in Thailand. I'm a big kid at heart, so fuck it. These are cream filled wafer sticks, brownie chocolate flavor. I don't like sugar and sweets, but I'm kinda of hooked on it lately. So whatever. I'm gonna go get me a drink and I'll be right back. Go ahead and get your uh this might be a roast episode, it might be a fun episode, it might be a life lesson episode or all the above. So get your Ray Bans on. I might even talk about Dorian A. Peters from the California Bar, number 261863. OJJDP, ICAC in Indian Country. Don't mess with me because I know how to shoot. And various uh, other motherfuckers who fuck with me. I always want to roast people and uh, never miss an opportunity for that. And, uh, but it, and more importantly, I want to talk about what's important to me. So the Shimmy Show, once again, it's about me. It's all about me, motherfuckers. So if you don't want to hear about me or hear what I think or hear what I want to discuss, go the fuck somewhere else. This is my show and I watch my own show. So, so be it. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go on a variety of topics. I'm just chilling here in Thailand. I'm uh, the land of sliding doors. I got my 30% uh, mango juice. It's going to be a long motherfucking day. Got my mango juice. Oh, got my... Uh, Got some fresh pineapples from the market. Got a bunch on these. They're delicious, by the way. Peel one of these bitches open right now. The fruit here in Southeast Asia is really good, by the way. It must be the fertile ground. Anywhere on the equator has, like, the best fruit, you know? The shit is just delicious, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Oh. Got my 99 cent frozen cup from Walmart, my shaker bottle. About to mix up my new BCAA powder, if I missed this on a previous episode. I'll talk about this for a minute, you know? Because, like, nobody sponsors this show, but if these motherfuckers pay me, I will happily endorse it because it works. Mutant BCAA 9.7, if I didn't talk about it on the previous show. BCAA powder, branch chain amino acid powder, is used for muscle recovery. I've been on the ship for almost a year, and it's helped me get my six-pack abs and all that shit. I used to use this brand called Cybation from Amazon, but here in Thailand, they have this, like, black market shit from Canada with no address on it. Uh, Walmart sells 5,000 gram BCAA powder, okay? Amazon sells 7,000. In Thailand, they have this mutant brand shit. And it is 9.7, 9,700 grams per one scoop of branch chain amino acid powder, which is leucine and isoleucine for those of you who don't care. But what this means, basically it means it's going to help you regrow your muscles and help you get the six-pack abs and cut your back fat and all that shit. So I'm taking one scoop of this powder, which looks very much like uh, cocaine or some shit, but I'm putting it... <laughs> Putting it in here in my water. Da -da, da -da -da -da. 
shake it up. And I say, why pay $10 for a shaker cup when you can pay 99 cents for one in the kids' aisle with the same goddamn plastic cup? So what if it has cartoons on it, you know? Maybe I like little blonde white cartoon girls and shit. 99 cents, 10 times cheaper. It's one way rich people save money. They're cheap in areas where other people are not cheap, you know? If you're not a billionaire, even if you are, why would you want to pay $10 for a plastic bottle or cup? Because it doesn't have cartoons on it. It's the same shit, you stupid motherfuckers. Life is all about... Maybe that's what my show is about today. You know? By the way, it's like 105 degrees outside on the balcony. I'm sweating. You guys always talk about, this nigger's sweating. He's got hyperhidrosis and this and that. I do, but it's also hot as fuck here. Thailand, the weather is just fucking ridiculous. Um, it's only 11 o'clock now. It's fucking hot. Fuck. But I love it here. You know, I love it here. So... I'll go inside and turn the AC on when I get fucking toasted enough out here. But anyway, you want to uh, have this BCAA powder within 20 minutes of your workout. So I just finished running the beach here, finished doing the morning workout. Now I'm going to shake that shit up and drink it. And this is going to help me recover my muscles, get stronger, get the six-pack abs, lose that body fat. And uh, it's hard to do it without BCAA. Like, it's about one-third... For you nutrition nerds and exercise nerds, it's like, you can exercise, there's some people that'll go to the gym and exercise their ass off for two, three hours a day, but if they don't do protein powder or BCAA powder, it's like, you'll get in shape, but it's going to take you five or six times longer, and why would you want to do that, man? Nobody's fucking immortal, so why wouldn't you want to, like, get faster results? Duh. I tried many years without doing supplements, and uh, I can tell you it's a waste of time. You might as well get in shape faster than doing you know? I mean, sooner than later, I should say. Mm. This is watermelon flavor, by the way. <laughs> Racism, watermelon flavor. But um, it doesn't really matter what the flavor is. You're not, you're not doing it for the taste. You know, it's palatable, but you're doing it for the muscle, muscle synthesis or whatever. Protein synthesis supplement. Helps protein synthesis, so they say. You know, good shit though. Ninety-seven hundred gram is the highest I have ever seen on the market. So you might as well get the extra couple grams if you can afford it. You know, or if you can get it. This this particular can was thirteen ninety nine baht, which is just under forty about four, under forty bucks, which is a lot of money. That'll last me for like a month. I might have mentioned it on an earlier show, but um. I need that shit. I mean, for, think about it. Motherfuckers will pay that much to fill up their car with gas. Why wouldn't you invest that in your body to have, like, you know, fucking fit, fit, fit-er abs and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Isn't your body worth more than the fucking uh, premium 91, 93 octane fuel you put in your fucking car? Your car is going to be a piece of shit in five years. It's going to be recycled in the fucking Pepsi cans or something. Most people who drive their shit to work every day in America and Canada and all that shit. So it's like, invest in your body. You only got one of these motherfuckers. I give a fuck about the car. I used to be one of them kind of guys that would put Mobile One oil and the best shit, red line oil, synthetic, all this bullshit in my car, premium, super unlit, so it doesn't knock. But I'd still live off the of top ramen noodles and Little Debbie Star Crunch cakes and just poor quality shit food, you know? Why? You don't have to live off of fruit snacks and Capri Suns while your car is fucking uh, better maintained than your body. Give me a fucking break, people. You know, I used to be one of the niggas that would park my car in the shade. I still do sometimes, you know. But, I mean, just to keep the paint fresh and shit. But, I mean, like, if you're going to go through the trouble of parking on the far end of the parking lot, okay, and park your car under a shade tree so the dash don't get hot and the roof don't get faded and all that oxidation shit from your paint, why wouldn't you take the same care for your body? Why wouldn't you put on sunscreen if you're going to protect your paint job on your car? Think about these things, people. Fuck. Okay, enough bitching about cars, because I fucking hate cars currently. So yeah, man, get some of that mango juice. Uh, I don't have a cup here. Well, I can use a shaker bottle, but fuck it. 
Here in Thailand, they have uh, mango juice. Twenty three percent, motherfuckers. You know, it used to be thirty percent. They're cutting that shit. God damn it! See, everybody's niggas don't think that I be reading packaging, but since last year this was thirty percent, now it's cut down to twenty three percent. I noticed the difference, man. That means you're getting a little bit seven percent more water. People don't be thinking, but I'm a package reader. Whenever you buy, let this be a life lesson to you. Whenever you buy juice, supplements, or whatever, read the fucking packages and see for a fact what percentage of the shit you're getting and how much percentage filler you're getting. It's best to get 100%. Like at home in Florida, I will get 100% Florida orange juice, high pulp, whatever, not from concentrate. You know, but for mango, it's usually if you can get about 30%, you're good, you know? Shit. Motherfuckers cut this shit down to 23%. They think I don't notice. They think they're slick, but I notice. When you buy your supplements and BCAA powder and protein powder, read how many grams of protein you're getting. Read, read, read. The, the truth is in the pudding, okay? I don't give a fuck what kind of, like, Hulk Hogan graphics or font they put on shit, but I'm always going to read the shit. Read the fine print, you know, it's like, whenever I would go and buy cars, you know, back in the day when I was like the racer guy buying cars all the time, it's like, uh, if you would race in the uh, stock class of SCCA, oftentimes people in the stock class would have like, they'd buy a new car almost every fucking month. It's very much a rich man's sport, right? And when doing so, I'd be at the dealership looking at the stats on the brochure, like how much does this car weigh? How much torque does the motor produce? What's all the... I'm looking at shit like most people don't look at in the brochure. Niggas are looking at the fucking paint job. Oh, it's got the fucking turbo this and the spoiler and it's got this and that and the other. I'm saying like how much does the motherfucker weigh? What's the power to weight ratio? Which model has the lightest weight and all that shit? I'm reading the stats. The hard data do not lie. Look at the motherfucking back page of the nutrition facts and you will get the truth, people. The truth is in the numbers, not in the marketing. So, ranting aside, <laughs> by the way, I got this, uh, I got some more football shirt. This shirt was 100 baht, baby, at the Bukau market here in uh, Thailand in Patty. I got all my, I'm famous for wearing $2 shirts because my laundry, if you motherfuckers can't see, it's my laundry right there, can you? It's fucking drying right there. Uh, it's a fucking place here. Motherfucking house here, they didn't give me a washing machine, so I had to wash and dry here. You know, I have to go to the fucking laundry machine or whatever. Anyway, that aside, so I've already spent 12 minutes ranting about juice and shit, right? Let's talk about some fun stuff. Let's talk about cameras and uh, lots of shit I want to talk about. You know, one, one interesting thing, uh, those of you guys who might want, even though I'm doing this on a laptop right now, most of the time I'm using this camera here to do my videos. This is my work camera I use for making my movies and all that shit. Uh, this is a Canon T5i with a uh, STM lens, meaning silent type motor. It has an extra ring on it to avoid all the mechanical autofocus noise. But I bring this up to tell you guys something. Uh... Your cell phone, your iPhone, Android, or whatever, in my case, my BlackBerry, it is not a replacement for a fucking real camera, okay? Uh, I've heard people tell me some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard is, you know, you should shoot your movies, your, your adult porno movies and shit or whatever, or my blog, anything. They say, you should shoot your movies with your phone, with your cell phone. And I'm like, huh? For at least the last 10 years where I've been behind the camera and in front of the camera or whatever, everything that is for sale is filmed with a Canon. Not even a Nikon, but a Canon. If you want to sell your footage, okay, if you want to make movies, whether it's professional, amateur, or whatever, if the shit is for sale, get it on Canon. Nikons and Sonys and all those other off-brands and shit, Pentax, fucking Leica, and Get a fucking can and save yourself the trouble. When I first got started uh, filming porn, like a long time ago, uh, I got a Nikon D40. And it lasted me for about three months. I actually dropped it, the lens, and some sensor. It's like a more fragile camera, but 
the image sensor was like it was better suited nikons are better suited for taking images of still things buildings fucking uh nature just shit that doesn't move okay canon tends to replicate skin tones and it's better it's better for filming humans and life and live subjects and the colors are just more correct and it's a more durable product and they've lasted me my last t3 eyes i've had three of them the motherfuckers are always stealing them and shit you know motherfucking uh, whatever but they're the shit okay so i highly endorse canon i will not buy any other camera at least for the last 10 years 20 years it's the standard okay every motherfucking everything you see on tv movies whatever it was probably shot with a canon you know unless it's like some hollywood shit with a panavision or a fucking red dragon even then they're still using cannons in the end for the things so canon is the shit don't get no shit other than canon you know as, as they used to say in oakland uh too short rap hit him with the cannon send him to cp bannon like i'm doing with some niggas here so yeah, Canon is the shit, man. So do not do not think for a second that your iPhone is a replacement for this. It is not. Your fucking iPhone or your Android or whatever little motherfucking Galaxy, Samsung or whatever, it's a fucking toy. You cannot tell me you can squeeze this technology into a little motherfucking phone you can put in your pocket. You the image and video quality will look flat and two-dimensional like a fucking Nintendo game. Okay, compared to this shit, you're not gonna have the depth of field. You're not gonna just. It's like saying you you could miniaturize a shotgun and put it in your pocket, or a 50 cal rifle and put it in your pocket. It's just not possible. You cannot shrink this technology down. No matter, I don't care. Don't even argue with me. The point is mute, moot, moot in legal terms. You know, fuck it. So that's my rant about uh motherfuckers making movies and shit with their with their fucking telephones give me a fucking break take that from a real movie producer you know your camera is not your phone ain't a camera it's a toy get a real fucking thing if you got really some shit to sell so that aside um a lot of shit i'm gonna talk about on here man fuck it what you guys want to talk about what you guys uh, maybe i should go go through my comments maybe I got time. I got all the time in the world here, man. Chilling, chilling, chilling. Chilling in Thailand while you guys are probably at work or school or something or whatever. While I'm eating fucking Doriamon chocolate sticks. Ah. So I hope life is treating you guys good. If not, do something about it. Shit. Not my problem because as I sit here talking to myself on the balcony is damn girl just left here and the house is a fucking mess again. It's like uh, all I gotta do today clean up the fucking house, do some laundry, work out again and keep talking my shit. Maybe upload some more shit in the background. All right. Let me look at my notepad here. And see what the fuck topics I haven't touched on yet. It's like my catch-up day here. Okay. So I made some note here the other day. <coughs> Excuse me, I need a drink. Give me some of that 23% name, though. All right. This is a note I wrote down here the other day. I'm reading from my own notes here on the screen, by the way. I said, uh, or I typed to myself for a show topic about sell about people who sell their time. You know, um, I might have been doing or listening to a show about fucking uh, sex workers or fucking escorts or some shit like that. It's just a popular hot topic or whatever. You know, that fucks me my own. You know, I fuck, I fuck a lot of chicks, right? A lot of girls sell their time to me. Okay, so this is what this is about. I wrote down here, you can't own people, you can only rent their time, and that is if they're willing to sell it to you in the first fucking place, you know. Human life, my life, your life, your parents, your children, family, friends, other significant other, human life, actually animal life too, is not owned by anybody. Everybody's got their own heart, you know. 
You can sell your time if you if you choose to. It's done voluntarily unless you're like, you know, you're born into fucking slavery or some shit like that. But even still, you, know, you have the option of leaving or dying or whatever, I guess, or doing something on a or else basis. But my point is you can't own people. Some people make it their mission in life to try and control other people. You know what I'm saying? It's probably what governments and things like that do of that nature. But realistically, realistically, what if everybody stopped listening one day? What if everybody just woke up one day and said, hey, fuck that. I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z. Now, sure, there's consequences. Like, I might wake up and say, I don't want to go fucking to work today. Okay? Not a problem. I just won't get paid, or this might happen, and that might happen, and that might happen. So, there are consequences to owning your own time, and there's consequences to not owning your own time, right? But nobody owns you. Nobody owns the hours in your day, even though many people will try to dictate it to you. This, this is the whole thing about school, work, uh, you know, people try to dictate, okay, you got to come here for eight hours a day, even if you finish the job or, or not, you know, you can't leave just because you, you could say like, okay, I think a fair thing would be to say like, okay, your mission, if you should wake up and say, they should say to you in the morning at school, your mission is to learn how to do this and solve X problem today within X amount of time. And after you solve that problem, you should be able to go home and go on about your business and go fucking swimming or whatever you want to do, right? But it's not that easy. They want to own you. They want to own and control your time from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. or whatever for school. Why? Why? Social control, probably. Why does a factory or job want to own you from 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m.? Or in many of my cases, I work 12 motherfucking hour shifts. Uh, some jobs where I work start at 10 a.m. and finish at 11 p.m. That was like some telemarketing job I had in Canada, some shit like that. I've had some 16-hour jobs where I work 8-hour shift, change uniforms or some shit, and go do another 8-hour shift, whatever. Why? Because I needed the money, so I thought, or whatever. You know, some motherfuckers got to work 2-3 hours. Two, 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 three drops to survive, you know? I have to run multiple businesses and shit to survive. I have multiple websites and shit, you know? So it's really up to whatever standard of living that you want to, uh... It depends on how much... It depends on how much shit you want out of life, I guess, really. So you can sell your time for whatever you want. You could work till the day you fucking die. You could work fucking 20 hours a day like a robot, if you choose. Or you can do like me and take vacations, holidays, take it easy, or work very hard and anticipate taking a break. But a lot of people don't take breaks like me. You got to take breaks, man. Dog. Motherfuckers. Like, we're all slowly dying. Don't keep working, 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 working without taking a break or else it's like, what are you working for? You're working for somebody else so that they could take a fucking holiday. Or is it so that they don't have to work at all, really? I mean, that's the whole upper class, underclass thing there. It's like, if you have, if you get to the point in life where you have most things handled, say you're, you have your basics, your food, clothing, shelter, housing, a vehicle, maybe a bicycle, or even a pair of fucking shoes. As long as you, it depends on what your level of, whatever your standard or level of comfort is. You know, some motherfuckers are never satisfied. They're never satisfied with the house they're in, or the car they drive, or the clothes they wear, or the, their jewelry, or their watch, or their this. So they're constantly working, 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 but just for shit. You feel me? One thing that separates wealthy and rich people is that they know when to say when, okay? Some nerd shit I'll do a side, side segment about, right? You guys are my age, you might have had a PlayStation 1 back in there. 90s or whatever when they came out I'm talking about this old game Metal Gear Solid 1 There was a character on there named Mei Ling Chinese girl you call up when you'd have uh, You push the select button and call her on the radio, right? And she'd give you like these little Laoshi, Laoshi, Sun Tzu Chinese quotes and shit like that, right? One of the first things the girl says to you is uh, Just because you see an item doesn't mean you have to get it Before you stick your neck out there, you know Make sure you really need it because it might not be worth it. And basically, she's warning your she's warning your character in the video game. You know, you might don't. It might not be worth it to go back into enemy territory to go and grab that item or whatever. 
if you really don't need it to complete the mission. Life isn't about just collecting all the items. Life is about, or at least the video game, is about completing the mission objective. And you can do so without getting all the items, weapons, power-ups, and shit. You know, you, you could complete the game without doing anything. You could just go run straight from A to B and be done and win the game. You know what I'm saying? So the game of life, you know, a lot of people that I know, especially family and shit like that, they aspire to have shit like, I need a Mercedes Benz and a big fucking house and a BMW and a this and a 401k and a retirement and a, and I need, I hear this shit, I need health insurance, I need this. They, they have this like, like 10 or 20 item checklist of like a lot of shit that I don't have or care about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hear motherfuckers talking about they gotta pay their fucking health insurance, mortgage insurance, uh, this and that, and uh, gotta buy all these goddamn prescriptions for diseases they have from working all their fucking lives and beating themselves down and eating shit food. It's like, I know some people, and I'm talking about myself, but I used to do this too, I know some people that eat shit quality food just so they can pay for their fucking car insurance. Like a non-tangible piece of paper that you might only have to use once every 10 years when some motherfucker bumps your car. Probably in transit to or from work or school. You know what I'm saying? What if you don't even have a car? What if you don't have car insurance? What if you don't have mortgage insurance? What if you don't have health insurance? You understand what I'm saying? Now, some people say it's risky to go through life without health insurance, right? I disagree. I think it's riskier to have an unhealthy body and whatever, it's riskier to have high blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and Lord knows what other kind of diseases I'm not even educated enough on. You know, I don't have any of that shit. So it's like, you can live life without doctors and health insurance if you're healthy enough. What the fuck, man? I'm 40 fucking years old and I'm good. What do you want? What are you going to do? I got hyperhidrosis. Okay, I sweat a lot. Rawr. Big fucking deal, you know? Spend your money where it counts, or as uh, as I read on Reddit recently, you should spend your money where you spend your time. That's a good way of putting it. So, like, let's say that you have to spend all your 70% of your day in a certain room or office or on the job or whatever. That means you should have the best tool possible to do that job. For instance, if my job is making movies, I'm going to have a good, this isn't the best quality Canon camera. The best one will probably be the phone, the big battery on the bottom, the... Uh, What's that big motherfucker called? The Mark V, Mark VIII, the big mother... It looks like this, but it's bigger and all. It's like a $5,000 version of my $500. Actually, this camera was $400 used on eBay. I'm not cheap. You buy a brand new for about eight or $900 or whatever, but I've learned that eBay is the shit, as long as the shit's good, you know, whatever. So, anyway, my thing is, like, I'm not going to go and try to make movies with a fucking cell phone. I'm going to buy the best quality thing to make my job easier, since this is where I'm going to spend my money, where I spend my time at, right? Think about that shit, you know? And by the way, this is probably, this is cheaper than most motherfuckers' iPhones. They just don't know it, you know? It's like motherfuckers seem like, oh my god, he's got this big camera, it's so expensive and fancy, and it's got all the features I need, it's got my interchangeable fucking lenses and everything, single. This is what separates a fucking, uh, a real camera from your motherfucking iPhone and whatever, the... The lenses and see the mirror on the inside there, the shutter and all that. SLR means single reflex, single lens, single, single lens reflex or whatever the fuck it's called. Look it up. But uh, my shit's got mirrors inside of it, whereas your cell phone just has chips, a fucking CMOS image sensor, a little motherfucking thing, you know. Uh, fuck. Can't believe. Before I started shooting with this, by the way, I was shooting with the Canon GL1. I filmed the old series and a lot of uh, Indian Girls and series, a lot of the old Shimmy Show episodes. They were filmed with the Canon GL1 DV tape camera, and that was what they called a uh, a three CCD camera, a three chip camera. That was the broadcast standard for like television for '90s and early 2000s or whatever before whatever. So when you would watch the news or whatever, or even when you watch Hollywood movies, they're filmed with three CCD cameras, three color chip display, the red, green, blue, whatever shit. But still, a phone don't work. I, I, I actually tried experimenting filming some episodes in Dominican Republic with a camp with a fucking Blackberry cell phone on a motherfucking selfie stick and shit like that. And the shit looked like shit. So 
I don't want my movies to look like shit. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, I still want them to be able to be like, it looks good. That movie looks good. When I watch an old movie like Coming to America or Harlem Nights filmed in the 80s or some shit, but it was filmed with Panavision cameras or whatever, it still looks excellent, crisp images and whatever, even though it's 20, 30 years old. You just can't get away with filming shit with motherfucking um, cell phones, people. God damn, I hate... You know, YouTube is full of cell phone videos, and I hate that shit. I tried it, and it's like, if you really want people to watch it and take you seriously, I mean, why would you want some shit that looks flat without any depth to it, you know? Shit. Let me get another one of these pineapples here. Fucking good, and I'm sweating here like a motherfucker. Huh. So, yeah. What else can I rant about on the Shimmy Show? Um rant or discuss, I should say. Okay, so I talked about people have the right to sell their time for whatever rate they choose, you know. I can sell my time for $10 an hour or $10,000 an hour. It depends. Whatever. Whatever I decide that day. That doesn't mean the world has to pay what I request, but I can at least throw it out there and put my bid out there. You're never going to get what you want unless you put your bid out there for it. You know what I'm saying? And you never... Never should underestimate your own worth is a good thing to tell people, too, you know? I'm not saying, and I, I, I say that because, like, I, I generally charge a flat rate for all my services and shit like that. Like, for instance, if I want to hire a model, or if some studio or model wants to hire me, there's typically a flat rate that's, it's not like I pay one girl a thousand dollars and another girl gets a hundred dollars, it ain't no shit like that. It's typically a flat rate, whether they're professional, amateur, or whatever, right? You could apply this to, like, a fucking person that paints my car or whatever. Okay, I could say to a person, all right, motherfucker, I'm going to give you 300 400 500 dollars to go and paint my car, you know. That doesn't mean I'm going to go and pay the next motherfucker $5,000 to paint my car because I've already decided in my mind, okay, this is what the fair market value in my area is for this particular service, right? Just like here in Thailand. Like, shit is like... Uh, Shit costs what it costs, okay? And whatever part of the world you're in, you should adjust your shit to wherever you go to. Now, if I go and move to fucking Bahrain or fucking uh, Qatar or something where motherfuckers just have, like, literally billions of dollars because there's fucking oil all under their fucking feet and shit, you know, and nobody has to work, it's like, oh, well, I could charge more for my services here because people are willing to pay more for it and the market value of it is more. It's like... If you move to, say, California, for instance, you'll get a higher wage and this and that. But also the cost of living is so much higher, too. So it's like, shit gets adjusted. Go to the South, go to the East Coast, fucking whatever, Texas, Georgia, Florida, whatever. Motherfuckers don't pay shit. I was actually surprised. By the way, the bird just flew right up here. Wow. I was surprised, actually, when I, I went to, uh, I'm a fan of 7-Eleven, by the way. 7-Eleven was my first job in high school. I talked to a girl in 7-Eleven, right, in Florida. I talked to the owner of the 7-Eleven, and I was surprised that they don't even earn $10 an hour there. In 2018, currently 2018 the year, right? Now, when I first started working for 7-Eleven in high school, I got $7.20 an hour, right? Do you know, this was in California, by the way, do you know that in Florida they are still paying $8.30 an hour at 7-Eleven? And this is over 20 years later. The cost of living and inflation has gone up. Like, I don't know how the fuck much since then, but I'm like, uh, there's no COLA. There's no cost of living adjustment for, like, minimum wage or entry-level jobs. And I'm like, God damn, how are motherfuckers making it? If I'm, I'm, I'm really disconnected because, like, I'm selling movies on the internet and shit, and I'm, obviously, I'm in Thailand right now and this and that and the other, and I get... I'm very much disconnected from the working world and like, uh, how are you motherfuckers making it on $8 an hour in 2018? You know, I thought people were at least getting $10 an hour or fucking 12 or something for a starter level or cashier, so-called low level fucking manual labor type of jobs. But I mean, motherfuckers are really scraping the barrel here. It's like, you'd have to work three motherfucking jobs, I think, just to, uh, you want to have a decent safe place to live in a fucking vehicle and good quality food unless you're basically 
sleeping in your car and working all the goddamn time. I mean, it's a it's a motherfucking grind. So I'll just be telling niggas like, yo, you're criticizing and judging me for, for making uh, adult videos and whatever, whatever. But I'm like, I sure as fuck ain't going to work for no $8 an hour. My life is worth more than that. Fuck, I'll move to motherfucking Norway or some shit and go work in 7-Eleven there before I go accept $8 an hour in the fucking South. Like, huh? In the words or quotes of my mom, hashtag black moms, that don't even buy gas. Like, how are you going to jack niggers for their time and not fairly compensate them? It's like, huh? That's modern day slavery in, in, in its own way. If you, ex if you accept a job for such low wages and you take it for a long time, like th that should only be something temporarily to get you over the hump until you can just basically eat and get your real hustle on. You know, motherfucker, I've, I've delivered newspapers in Canada. I've worked telemarketing jobs. I've been a truck driver. I've been a security guard. I've been an accountant. I've worked at a casino. I've worked for the, uh, some, Ind what do they call it? Indian shit. The, uh, Chippewa Band of Minnesota, like I've, I've done a variety of motherfucking jobs. Seven Eleven, I've worked, uh, done some brand ambassador bullshit for Ford, Hyundai, uh, Costco. I mean, pretty much a lot of what most other people I did. COPD, Boringer, Engelheim Pharmaceuticals. Uh, I've worked at the airport, Goa, um, airport security, the pre TSA shit after nine eleven. I mean. My nigga, I've had, like, probably over a hundred, like, shit jobs, I should say, that pay, like, around the $10 an hour range, and it's like, or I think the most might have been, like, 15, 16 bucks an hour or something, that brand ambassador modeling type of bullshit, you know, rent-a-model shit, you know, Craigslist type of jobs and shit where you show up and wear khakis and do what you're fucking told. What else? Uh, U.S. Army, I've done some shit for them, brand ambassador shit, be all you can be. The fuck does that mean? Be all you can be. I'm already all I can be. I'm a nigga in Thailand chilling on the motherfucking, uh, motherfucking balcony here. Drinking mango juice. Eating that good Asian pussy all goddamn day. Getting massages and shit. Fuck y'all niggas. Tell me, be all I can motherfucking be. I'm not gonna give my life, you motherfuckers. Country that don't even like me most of the time that's working against me. Working against me to entrap me and put me in the motherfucking ground. Like Dorian A. Peters, California bar ID number 261863. Quote unquote, don't mess with me because I know how to shoot. <laughs> don't mess with me because I know how to shoot. You know how to shoot, nigga? <laughs> I ain't letting that shit go. You know what I'm saying? But. Fuck that. I'm not going to go join the goddamn U.S. Army services and all that bullshit. Speaking of the Army and Armed Forces, by the way, um, yeah, man, um, there's a lot of people in my family that served in the motherfucking so-called service, you know, Navy, Army, uh, motherfucking, I don't know if they did Air Force or whatever, but there was a lot of Navy people. You know, black, black, black men in particular are often in the Navy, you know, shit like that. You know, I got uncles, cousins and shit like that who've done it before. And it tends to have really fucked their heads up, you know what I'm saying? They come back all fucking jittery and medicated up and on some, like, that soldier indoctrination. They really break motherfuckers down and program them, but they certainly don't deprogram them and decommission them before they put them back into society. So a lot of them are fucked up for life and shit and don't realize it. But it's like, um, how can you commit and give your life to something or I, I just don't get it you know it's it's like it's like that shit they tell you when you're uh i went to a, like a young you know you're in church when you're in church when you're a little you little guy 12 13 years old they ask you to give your life to the lord whatever that means i don't know what that means but or did you see god or did you see jesus and do you believe jesus died for your sins and all that shit and they ask you to see like uh they want you to see the invisible they want you to have this thing called faith <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't buy into that bullshit. I'm smart enough to not give or sacrifice my life for anybody except for me. Fuck you people. You know, you got your own life. If you want to sacrifice and give your life and be a martyr, go and motherfucking jump in a volcano right now. 
Go jump off. I'm not going to. That's like saying I'm going to go swan dive off the motherfucking balcony here because I give my life to the Lord or some shit. I'm like, huh? No. Self-preservation, baby. My life is number one and I can't uh, do it. Hey, it's thundering. Nice. Might have a little bit of rain to cool shit down today. I'm good. Chilling, chilling like a villain here, boy. Fucking love Thailand. So anyway, yeah, man. Uh, motherfuckers can just... Fuck off, eat shit, and die. I'm not dying for you people. Definitely not going to go and join a motherfucking army or any kind of fucking people's liberation army defense shit unless I'm the motherfucker that's, like, leading the shit, you know. I'll, I'll do it for me, but not for you. Fuck your organization. This, this, is, this is the Chevy show, okay? <laughs> Expendables VR, as the Twitter nigga says or something. So it's like... You have to live your life, and uh, I'm willing to live for what I believe in. You know and I'm saying, as far as dying for shit, I'm not willing to die for anything. I mean, that death is a pretty high motherfucking cost, I think, to pay for anything. You know and I'm saying, I'll risk my life, but I'm definitely not just going to fucking die. Because when you're dead, you're fucking dead. Fuck that shit, you know? If anything, I'm going to go and create some more life while I'm here walking this earth, you know? So it's like... What are y'all doing, man? The fuck are y'all doing? I don't know. Okay, so let me go on. I'm ranting, rambling at the 40-minute mark. I don't care. I haven't even started roasting yet. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> Let's see what else I got on this little file here. Um, maybe I'll make another file for the roast. Let's see what else. Okay, I wrote something on the notepad here about... I might as well get into this little bit here. Let me Let me open up the notepad screen. Thank you for listening to me, by the way. Um, you motherfuckers could actually help if you wanted to have more people see my videos and shit. I'm not going to shill and beg for Patreon, PayPal, pennies. I don't want your little motherfucking $1, $5 donations, nigga. I don't, nigga. Like, if you want to if you want to support the Shimmy Show or whatever, go buy my movies. I want your money. The real money, nigga. The real bread. Slide your motherfucking credit card and spend that money, nigga. I want the twenty nine ninety five. I want the subscription. I want to give you niggas the fucking, my 300, 400 movie library, you know, where I'm fucking riding them girls and shit like a motherfucking bicycle, you know, see what I do in my spare time if you want to support me like that, but I'm not going to go in here and beg for your little, go ahead and want y'all niggas support me and give me a dollar, you know, goddamn cam girl motherfucker, go look up my Twitter, shimmy triple X, this, that, and the other, and buy my fucking movies, all right? So, uh, if you can't do that, if you a broke-ass motherfucker, at least go hit the thumbs up or the goddamn, uh, subscribe button, because I, from what I'm hearing through YouTube and, uh, what's the other shit, this is on Twitch and, uh, the other platforms this shit's mirrored to, the more people that thumbs up and like a video or whatever, the higher, or, or more people see it, basically. So, if you want more motherfuckers to see me, thumbs up it. If you want less motherfuckers to see me, thumbs down it. Really that simple. But if you've watched this far up to the 42 set, 42 minute mark, you know what I'm saying? You must either like me, hate me, or stalk me or whatever. But either way, hit the motherfucking thumbs up button if you ain't gonna buy my goddamn movies. Alright? But as far as that little bullshit, I don't want your little motherfucking, motherfucking $1, $5 PayPal's, nigga. I'm not no goddamn cam girl. You fucking break. Go to MFC or one of them little, uh, Streaming shows where the bitches got their titties out and all that bullshit. The same that kind of show. Real talk. All right. So this is the topic on the notepad with that little commercial aside. You niggas break yourself thumbs up or whatever for the like or subscribe. Uh, I did some topics. I wrote some notes about being black. Okay. Now, the topic I wrote on the notepad here is going to be funny here. I actually wrote... I do not see myself as being black. I think I, I wrote this because Kanye West recently said some shit I read on this uh, Twitter or whatever. But he says, I'm not black, I'm Kanye. You know, and I'm like, all right, whatever. But it is what it is. I'll explain myself, though. I, th I think he did a very terrible job of explaining himself. Shimmy, me, I, Shimalise McBeb, Shimmy Triple X Twitter will explain to you why I don't really feel that I'm... I might be black, but I'm not as African-American as you motherfuckers think, and I'm not a good representation of African-American people. I'm really not, so, you know? And here's why. Here's why I don't see myself as being an African-American, why I don't see myself as being a quote-unquote nigger, you know? 
cognitive dissonance, you might say it is, seeing myself from uh, other people's point of view or whatever, looking in the mirror, self-reflecting. Here we go. Here's some reasons why I wrote down a notepad. I'm just going down the list right here, all right? Now, um, I don't have enough social reinforcement to tell me that I'm black, right? Like, I don't really, um, the main thing is I don't really trip on, uh, in, in America, I'm speaking not about here, but I don't really trip on white people the way that most black people trip and react and behave around other white people. Like, I'm socialized and used to white people. You know, I had a white wife. I, I have a lot of, like, white girlfriends. White, I just fuck a lot of white girls. I'm around white girls all the time. I'm around white guys all the time. I'm into white boy shit. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I'm a long-distance runner, okay? I can't play basketball good. I can't play football. I'm not into nigger shit. I don't like Dodge Chargers and Chrysler 300s and Cadillacs, okay? I like European cars, BMWs, Volkswagens, Mini Coopers, like well-engineered European shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a nerd. I'm an honor student. I graduated with fucking 3.8 something GPA, honor roll, magna... What do they call it? Magna cum laude or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of Asian friends all throughout school, through elementary school and whatever. All my friends were foreign kids. They were mostly fucking Chinese. Actually, a lot of Chinese girls were my friends you know, growing up because they just, they were just more accepting of me. You know, some of my best friends growing up, they were Chinese guys, whatever. They played tennis. They played Nintendo with me and they, uh, they introduced me to like bootleg Nintendo Famicom cartridges and all sorts of like just cool Asian shit, you know, and I've very much been into like just not really Asian culture, but just Asian people have really cool shit, you know, they have, they got good shit, they have good shit, cheap shit, and in abundance of it, and they don't, they're, they're very frugal, I would say in general, uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, especially, they do not like wasting money, they're very efficient, you know, they're, they're not into shit unless it's efficient. And I very much think the same way. That's why I'm in Asia right now. It's like you should be around the people that you think the most like and get, get along with the most. You know, I, I love Thailand. I love whatever. You know, it's... I'm more comfortable here than I am in fucking East Oakland or Orlando, Florida or Minnesota or Thunder Bay, Ontario or... Uh, in the other places I've lived at before, you know? So it's like, wow, maybe I'm really not as, uh, maybe my brain isn't running African-American software. How about that? But let's talk about some other shit that I have on my list here. Now, I talk white. <laughs> I wrote, I speak too many languages. Yo habla mucho idiomas. Espanol, Tailandia, un poquito, you know? Fluent motherfucking Spanish. How about that? How many niggers do you know how many African Americans do you know? Cuantos negritos tu, tu uh, conozco uh, habla español perfecto? Dominicano, uh, de Costa Rica, Costa Rican Spanish, whatever, Castilian Spanish. I mean, I can talk to motherfucking Colombians, Costa Ricans, Dominicans, fucking Haitians, fucking. I can speak that shit good. And to a degree, I look like I'm one of them. If I go and put on, not in Thailand per se, but I mean, if I go and buy their clothes and dress like them and shit, I can go ride the motherfucking taxi and buses and shit with them and do to my little small motherfucking frame. I actually blend in pretty well. I look like a motherfucking local. I don't stick out like a sore thumb, like motherfucking Dorian A. Peters and the motherfucking Sasua brothels and shit like that in Dominican Republic. You know, if you're a black American motherfucker, you're either super tall, super big, wide, whatever, and you stick out. I don't stick out. I'm a fucking foreigner, half-breed motherfucker. So it's like, tell me something. Tell me how black I am. Why well, I got these small motherfucking African long-ass arms? He's got them long arms. Some motherfucking cracker told me on a motherfucking volleyball team, block, nigger, you got those? He didn't say nigger, but he's like, oh, and you got them long arm, you long, you long monkey arm, motherfucker. You know? <laughs> I do. Can't deny it. So it's like my features are not in line with most African-American Negroes. You cannot deny this. You know? So it's like, whatever. Your motherfucker's calling me Bob Marley and shit all the time. You know? 
Is Bob Marley an African American? No, he's half black, half, I mean, half Jamaican, half European white or whatever, you know? So it's like, what the fuck? Is Bob Marley a nigger? I have hardly ever heard Bob Marley be called a nigger. So if he, if he's not, then what makes you think I am? You know what I'm saying? I can play that role to a degree, but I'm like, whatever. I don't talk that hood shit like that, Playboy. Know what I mean? Know what I mean, Playboy? Down there in the south, dirty, 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 dirty south. I can't talk like that. That you, you feel me? You feel me, dog? You feel me? It sounds. I sound like a counterfeit nigga when I talk, dog. For real. Word. So why why would I try to be somebody I'm not, yo? You know, I got a passport. I got a passport with so many motherfucking pages stamped. I got to get another motherfucking page or get another passport. Now I've been to so many fucking countries, got so many visas. How many niggas do you know that have worked on Indian reservations, got Canadian visas for motherfuckers? I'm a Canadian motherfucking permanent resident. Got a social insurance card, health card, with the motherfucking Queen of England and all that shit on it. You know, visas for fucking everywhere. Been to Philippines, Thailand. United Arab Emirates, motherfucking uh, Indonesia, uh, Singapore, fucking China and shit recently, uh, Japan. Uh, I've just been around the block, nigga. You know, and I fuck hoes in every motherfucking country. I'm, I'm internationally accepted. How you say I'm uh, locally known but internationally accepted? Not too many black people can say that. You know, I'm not a, I don't discriminate, I'm not racist, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I date outside my race. <laughs> Got no hangups. Like I say on the other shows, I film Dominicans, Jews, Navajos, Sioux, Asians, and white girls too, on Wednesdays and bank holidays. Okay. I read books all the time. I like psychology. I like books on obscure topics. You know? I recently read a book, a motherfucking 300 page book about men's shoes, of all things. You know, I like, I like reading weird shit. You know what I'm saying? So, what I learned from reading shit that's not, uh, here's the hang up too. A lot of black people, self-included, when I was younger, I used to only read books written by black people. Imagine how racist that is, or how, how limited my field of vision was, you know? I used to only read shit like Autobiography of Malcolm X, fucking Elijah Muhammad, fucking Nation of Islam, brainwashing books, and Farrakhan the Traveler, and all this, uh, all this black power, 70s, Huey Newton motherfucking ideologies and all that shit. You know, I'd read Francis Crest Wells' thing, Mises' papers, and, you know, it's, it's nice to read all that shit. I'm, I'm very well educated on the black African diaspora. I know about the African-American struggles, but I want to expand my world, okay? I want to read shit by Asian people who are smarter in general than black people. I read books by motherfucking Jews who have the motherfucking highest IQs statistically. Okay? Jewish people do have the highest IQs. Okay? Prove it on test scores. Prove it on SAT scores. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, you know, even I was indoctrinated at a young age about this shit that, uh, oh, the Jews run the media and the Jews run the government and this, that, and the other. And maybe they do. I don't fucking know. Seems like a lot of them are represented there, but it's like highly intelligent people. Jew, Jews in general in mass have the highest IQs, like as far as test scores are concerned. I'm not saying they're the smartest motherfuckers, okay? They've got their own sets of problems, and they have like motherfucking health problems that only that only they have. Motherfucking Ashkenazi tay sacks and, you know, there's, there's strengths and weaknesses and whatever. Maybe that's another topic for another show, I guess. But it's like, okay, they're some, they some real brainiac motherfuckers, so why don't you try to learn from them instead of hating on them all the goddamn time, right? You know, I'm not anti-Semitic or whatever. I, I got Jewish friends. I kind of have a thing for Jewish girls, you know, curly hair and shit. They're beautiful, I think. And by the way, Ethiopians are Semitic people. Go and Google that on Wikipedia. I'm Semitic motherfuckers, too, partly. So maybe that's why I think a little differently, huh? So I can't talk about Jews or I'm talking about myself. You know, look up Ethiopians. 
Look up Ethiopians on Wikipedia, and it'll say Ethiopians are Semitic people. I'll look it up right now, actually. Hold on. Wi-Fi works out here in the balcony. Let's see. Wikipedia Ethiopians. Let's see what it says here coming up. It was Wi-Fi. Slow in a motherfucker in Thailand. Okay, here it is. Ethiopians. Wiki. Official languages. Amharic. Capital Addis Ababa. Looking, looking, looking. Let's, one second. This should be on the first page. Oh, it gave me a result for Ethiopia instead of Ethiopians. Hold on. Ethiopians. I see it's now renamed the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Okay, Ethiopian, from the Greek, Latin word meaning having a burnt face. Land of the burnt faces or some shit literally translated into. Uh, the race, clicking that page right now. Ethiopian people, Negroid race. Okay, here it is. It's from Wikipedia, people white people stuff. Ethiopia's population is highly diverse. Most of its people speak a Semitic or Cushitic language. The Oroma, Amhara, Somali, and Tigrayans make up more than three quarters, 75% of the population. So there's something in the city. Yeah, Ethiopians are Semitic people. They're mostly Greek Orthodox, whatever, but their lineage is traced from motherfucking uh, Queen of Sheba, and King Solomon in the Bible, I don't really fucking believe in or whatever, but I mean, House of Solomon, House of David, all that Lion of Judah shit, there's a reason why there's like a motherfucking Star of Judah or whatever they call that shit on the flag. It's not there accidentally, right? So I can't deny my own motherfucking uh, Semitic roots. Maybe that's why I got a big motherfucking nose. I got a big motherfucking triangle nose. People often fucking... Uh, Joan me about, but I mean, that's why, nigga. I'm got a little bit of Jew in me. Fuck it, right? And that's not a bad thing or whatever. But, um, yeah, man, fucking, um, Jewish people, they got big motherfucking brains, dog. They, I'm not saying that they're smarter people, but having higher IQs means they process information faster, and faster is better, so you could equate that with being smarter. I'd rather much have a faster processor brain than a slower one, right? So, with that said, uh, okay, I'm a world traveler, speak many languages, I'm a weird mixed hybrid, black, Ethiopian, whatever. Other reasons why the black thing, black people don't necessarily accept me as their own because I'm too motherfucking mixed and bizarre. I mean, my height, my this. What else did I write on here? Black girls don't accept me, my height, I'm five foot nine, dick length, you know. My dick, if you watch my motherfucking movies, my dick is less than seven inches long. Nice and thick as a motherfucking Coke can, or almost, but it's like six and a half to six and three quarters inch long. I don't have a 12 inch dick. I got a, you know, whatever, but I'm a short motherfucker, so fuck it. I don't like the old Martin Lawrence joke goes, I won't choke you, but you'll get a mouthful. <laughs> Buy my movies, I want your money, honey. You know, shimmy triple x.com, c4s.com, 30703. <laughs> what else? Uh, lack of, I have, lack of, what did I write? This is funny. Lack of sub-Saharan Negroid features, meaning I don't have a big motherfucking flat bell pepper ass nose. My skin is not as black as my hair. Maybe if I stay in the sun long enough, it'll get that way in Thailand here, you know. Um, uh, this is another thing I wrote here. Caucasian features. Ooh. That's going to ruffle some feathers there. See my hairy ass motherfucking arms, right? Right? You see my hairy ass motherfucking legs on the chair here? I got hairy motherfucking legs, right? Most black people, most African American people, especially dark skinned people, do not have body hair. I have hair on my back, even though I shave my chest, whatever I have. If I don't shave, I have a little bit of hair on my back, but I'm, I'm a very hairy motherfucker, if you guys can't tell. 
that is a Caucasian trait as far as anthropology is concerned. So I did, even though I'm a college dropout, university dropout, I did happen to take an anthropology class. And the one thing I did get out of it is that there are only three types of humans on the planet and every, everyone else is like a hybridized mix of them three, right? I'm, I'm one of the hybrids, right? But it's like you're either a Negroid, Caucasoid, or Mongoloid, meaning you're black, white, or Asian. Everything else is a mix of those three. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Native Americans fit into the mongoloid category, meaning they are fucking Asians. I don't care what you motherfuckers say. You guys have the frame and whatever of Asian people. You have the same alcohol intolerance. You have lack of body hair, just like most motherfucking Asians, you know? So Native Americans are not their own racial category. Latinos and Hispanics are not their own racial category. They are in the Caucasian, Caucasoid category, right? Um, certain people like Dominicans, they definitely are kind of like hybridized eight different ways, but they fit the, um, they fit in the Negroid slash Caucasoid category. Very little Mongoloid. They don't have too much Asian in them. Though some do. There's a little bit of that in there, but not too much, right? So it's like, uh, Hispanic basically means white. I don't understand why uh, white people have a problem in, in America with Mexicans. I mean, they're, they're just another version. You know, it's like Latino is white, okay? You motherfuckers are white, white, white. You're not black unless you're Puerto Rican or Dominican with curly-ass motherfucking hair. You have to look at people's features and behaviors versus what they tell you, okay? Latino, Latina is not a race. Hispanic is not a race. You motherfuckers are white unless you're from the Caribbean, okay? You Caribbean motherfuckers are not that white. You're like a half black, half white hybrid in some cases, but probably like more more than likely 75, 85% black, okay? You got a lot of the African in you, right? But yeah, that's an important topic to bring up there. Native Americans are Asians. And this is coming from the man that has the number one Native American adult site on the internet, Indian Girls, whatever, for the last fucking 10 years and plus and whatever. And that shit's getting reloaded. Like, I'm having that shit come up in a couple weeks again, actually. You know, fuck the OJ, JDP, ICAC, and Rhino and all that bullshit. They, they actually lost a lot of their funding, too. That was really one real good thing I saw. Um, Trump is just like, ax that shit. Like, fuck you niggas, right? I was reading this here. They got rid of the old guy, the, the, the fat nigga with the glasses, Robert Liston being and all that shit. He's a DA in Philadelphia or some shit now. I keep up on motherfuckers like that. You know, Trump Trump is making cuts to the OJJDP. Like, hey, you niggas are this and that. So follow them on YouTube. Follow, look, look, search for them on YouTube. You gonna see me. Dropping dimes like motherfucking Rico and Belly, you know. Might have to drop a dime on them niggas with the truth. The truth about B4PP document. P dot, document B4PP dot PDF and the entrapment and all that bullshit on me. And all that 10 year long millions of dollars grant money shit motherfucking task force ass out on me. Right? Y'all niggas getting disbanded. Y'all niggas are losing your jobs. You better go work at motherfucking Walmart now, boy. <laughs> All them bitches and shit. Fuck y'all people. Train station motherfuckers. And I'm getting to y'all soon, too. Don't think y'all ain't. I'm not done roasting you motherfuckers yet. Fuck the OJJDP and all that bullshit they put me through. You niggas are going to have your day. That roast is going to be a long one. It might be three motherfucking hours long or more. Might be multi-part. Because I have that much hate in my heart for them for what they've done to me. And I ain't done shit, right? So getting back to my black thing. Sidetrack. See, I can go on this shit for hours here. Again, hit the motherfucking thumbs up or like button or subscribe if you ain't done so already. And go buy my goddamn movies, more importantly. You know what I'm saying? Shit, it's starting to get hot out of this motherfucker now. But I like doing what I do. I do this because it's fun. It's I like talking. So fuck y'all. It's my show. When I'm done, I'm going to watch myself talk. Play myself back. Fuck television. All right, so Caucasian features. What reasons why I don't feel like I'm black or as black as African American motherfuckers might think? Lack of uh, sub-Saharan Negroid features. Uh, East Africa, Ethiopia is very far away from West Africa. It's like the distance from Alaska to Maine. 
okay, East California to Florida or California to Puerto Rico. Like, are motherfuckers in Alaska the same as motherfuckers in Puerto Rico? Well, that's like comparing me the West Coast to Far East Coast. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sub-Saharan. I'm not, I'm not in the motherfucking Congo and Senegal if my dad is from motherfucking the other motherfucking side of the continent. Really? Fuck. <laughs> the lack of sub-Saharan Negroid features, all right? Caucasian features, hairy legs, back and chest, ability to run, ability to run long distances for hours. That's the truth. I can look at my fucking track, cross country, 10K, 5K, whatever. Like Sonic the Hedgehog, running does not affect me. I do not get tired from it. Most black people, African Americans, cannot run to the fucking corner to 7 Eleven. They might could sprint for 100 yards, but they cannot run for more than a couple minutes. You know, it's interesting. Like, I have like a dis different aspiration, or my lungs are just, I'm just different. I have a different body type, all right? Accept it for what it is, okay? Um, I have the ability to swim, unlike a lot of black people, to sink like motherfucking rocks, okay? Um, despite, I wrote it right here, despite being, despite being socialized, reading my writing here, despite being socialized by black people, I am like a Volkswagen running with a Ford Taurus ECU that has been converted to standalone fuel management. <laughs> I crack myself up with the notes I write myself. All right. Uh, what else I wrote here? Not into most nigger shit, rims, Jordans, gold chains, General Motors products. I have a different diet. I like mango juice, smoothies, branch chain amino acid powder. You know, I value my health. I don't, I'm not into fried chicken, KFC, McDonald's, Burger King, Dunkin' Donuts, motherfucking Tim Hortons and all that garbage ass food, Starbucks. I don't care. I want my shit directly from the ground as pure as possible. With the rare exception of uh, here in Asia, the snack of the Dor Doriamon motherfucking fix. Kind of cool. They were cheap, by the way. They were like only a dollar. So like, fuck it. Got to have something on the coffee table for girls to snack on. And they motherfucking come over. So whatever. But I don't. I don't like consume junk. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, what else did I write here? I, I read diff I read books written by non-black people, which is important. That's how you learn. You know, it's like I don't understand why black people don't accept that white people are generally smarter than them. If you deny this and start talking all this we was Kang shit about how niggers built the pyramids and shit like that and like, okay, it's 2000, even if black people did build the pyramids, even if they did, it's 2018, what difference does it make? And you weren't from, if you're in America, you weren't from motherfucking Egypt. You know how far fucking Egypt is from Congo or the Senegal or whatever, or all that West Coast, uh... West Africa shit. I mean, Egypt is up north. I mean, that's motherfucking Arab, Arab fuck niggas and niggas that look like me. You know, I'm, I'm the mother, motherfuckers that built the pyramids more than likely look like me. You know, I don't know. They didn't look like DeAndre fucking Willis and uh, Leroy and all that shit. Get over that shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck. Alright, so what else did I write here? Different physical structure. My body is different. Uh... I'll be stand up, you motherfuckers haven't seen my other videos or this is your first time seeing me. Like, uh, well, I have the body and shape of the average mother can stand in the door frame here. Look at my body, yo. Now, do I look like the average motherfucking African American, five foot nine? Okay. I got big motherfucking legs, alright? But uh, I got a big. I got a big ass, but it's like, motherfucking, um, I'm different. I'm different, so why do you want, why do you want to make me into something that I'm not? Real talk, right? Really though. Huh. So yeah. Open that up for a little bit less area. Hmm. So yeah, um. Other notes here on the screen here. There's almost no other African American slash Ethiopian mixed humans on the planet. I'm like one of the rarest motherfucking 
breeds of people that I think, you know, I've yet to meet any motherfucker like me. It's like half black, half Ethiopian. My, my mom and my dad came together to make me, and I'm just like, I'm a weird mix, you know. I'm, speaking of that, by the way, there's a lot of people in the porn industry and in the adult video industry that are kind of like hybridized or whatever. And I think one thing that I might start doing this year is trying to like make a series of like just me fucking like some very exotic hybridized type of chicks, like. I need to go and look this up, actually. Um, see if see if this girl Eva Angelina is still available for booking. She is mixed Cuban and Chinese. You know, if you don't know what what I read so far, and it's like, okay, that's a unique mix, much like me, because like most, how can you say this, man? Um, most Africans, like from any part of any country in Africa, if they do get a woman, it's usually a white woman. Usually a blonde white woman, you know what I'm saying? I mean, look at me. I, I chose a white woman from Canada, or whatever. That's even a more further rare mix, you know, whatever. But it's like, um, that's very, it's a very uncommon mix. I mean, usually, you know, black Americans will have kids with other black Americans or white Americans or Spanish girl or some shit. But from Africa, Africa is a long motherfucking way. That's why there's not too many motherfuckers that look like me online or offline. You know, I'm just, I'm just that nigga. I'm shimmy, so is what it is. So I'm a rare motherfucker. East Africa is very far away from Florida, but I'm here now, <laughs> motherfuckers. So that is what it is. So that was my little notes about me and why I don't understand why people want to put me in the black. Just pure black African-American category. I did go for some gene DNA shit like about 10 years ago. I went to like some sperm bank, which may give me like maybe fucking five or 10 years from now, I'll have like 10 more kids all over the world or more, you know, from like people that can't have kids and shit like that. So this is like a time capsule for that, I guess. But it's like, um, yeah, man, um, I'm unique. They told me, I told them I was black when I went to the thing or I'm, black Ethiopian, and they told me, no, you're not a hybrid, or you're, you're a different kind of hybrid. They called me an octoroon. At first, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Octoroon? I've heard of, I heard of terms like mulatto and quadroon, but octoroon? I'm like an eight-way mix or whatever or some shit. I'm like the character, uh, the two brothers or whatever in uh, Metal Gear Solid PlayStation 1. The sons of Big Boss, basically, where they have, like, eight sons or whatever. I'm, like, some weird hybridized mix of uh, black, Arab, white, motherfucking lots of shit. You know what I'm saying? Lots of Jewish, I mean, lots of motherfucking, there's a lot of motherfucking genes, you know, in the little sperm and egg milkshake that made me. So it's like, uh, I'm a unique motherfucker, right? And it's a very beautiful thing. You know, I think I'm a beautiful person. I don't know about you guys. But fuck it. I like looking at myself. I'm full of myself, you know, so that's why I'm always trying to polish and uh, upgrade myself. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. Nobody else going to do it for me. I'm going to toot my own horn. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's my that's my little thing about uh, black shit. Me and, me and Mr. Black Man here. Chocolate Man, as they call me here. Hey, you chocolate man. Massage. You like chocolate man massage? They see on the streets here. Ah, okay. What else did I write on this thing here? I wrote some notes about. I might have gone onto this about this in some other shows, but this was a topic of uh, behavior logging. Okay, um, this was one of my NPD notes. If you had anybody in your life who's just acting weird, or you don't understand them, or their behaviors don't match their words, uh, get out a notepad and just write down their routine for like a week or so, like what time they wake up, what TV show they watch, what book they read, uh, what kind of information are they putting in their head and what are they doing? What's their routine? Do they exercise at such and such a time? Do they do this? Most people have a fairly consistent day-to-day -day routine. They, they might drink a beer or smoke a cigarette at the same time of day, every day, or they'll read a newspaper at the same time of day, every day. Or they'll go to the fucking corner store at the same time of day every day. Like most people have a fairly predictable routine, self-included, you know what I'm saying? So 
if you log this shit and then look at your paper after a week, take a note of anything that you might think is abnormal. Okay? That's what I wrote this down. Write down everything person X has done disregarding their words and review the paper because people can come through you with their words. Oh, I was doing this, this, and that. They call it gaslighting. Gaslighting, by the way, is a term in psychology where it's like people go, uh, um, they got a bottle on my head or something. I can't balance it. I'm not that good. It's like, uh, it's like a mother. Can I even do this here? Let's see if I can have motor skills. Hey, baby. Gaslighting is like saying, hey, what bottle? There's no bottle on my head. What bottle? What are you talking about? That's the definition of gaslighting. When somebody does something to you right in front of your own eyes and they deny it to you, like saying, I do not have a bottle on my head right now. What are you talking about? You're crazy. There's no bottle on my head. What do you mean, man? I've never had a bottle on my head before. You're tripping. Maybe you have a bottle on your head. What's wrong with you? You need to get some psychological help. You need Jesus. That's what your problem is. You know what I'm saying? You need to stop watching all that goddamn porn. You need to stop making them goddamn movies. That's what your problem is. You, you're, you're, you're fucked up in the head. You're the one with the problem. I do not have a bottle on my head. <laughs> That's what gaslighting is, right? Gaslighting is a psychological term where people try to fuck or they do fuck with your sense of reality intentionally to make you seem like you're the crazy one, you know? What bottle? I don't have no bottle on my head, you know? Whenever a motherfucker does that to you, stop talking to them immediately because they're doing it blatantly right in front of your eyes. And it oftentimes takes for you to see it happen in real time right before your eyes to know before you notice that they're fucking with you. So that's the purpose of uh, writing down the behavior log. Um, people study them, see what they do, and see what they deny. If they deny shit that's factual like that, like there's not a gray bandana on my head, what are you talking about? I've never had, a, I don't even like gray bandanas. And they start that shit up, man, get a motherfucking as big a shovel as you can find, and dig, dig, dig dirt on these motherfuckers because they're hiding a lot of shit from you. They're fucking with your sense of reality, and I don't like that shit, right? But logging their behaviors will help you to uh, better see this, because the paper is not going to lie. You know what I'm saying? The paper, whatever you observe, is not going to lie. Your eyes are not going to lie to you, though their brain and their mouth will tell you shit. Oh, if you really love me, you wouldn't be you know, all that shit. So, okay, getting back to my writing on my thing here. Um, write down that person, everything the person does, disregard their words, review the paper, log their daily activity, Habits, routines, addictions, what they read, watch, and eat, their relationships, past life choices, past relationships, past successes and failures, behaviors. Everyone presents themselves in the best light on paper, self-included and everything, because everyone says like, okay, well, somebody's going to read this in the future. I say to myself, someone's going to look at this video in the future or whatever, so maybe I should not have on dirty clothes or something or whatever, you know what I mean? I'm outside now, but I'm still like, all right, fuck it. I at least made sure that I have on clean clothes, even though I don't care about too much other shit. You know what I'm saying? So what else did they write here? What are their behaviors? Everything else is lip service. What are their behaviors? I write this down to be like, uh, you shouldn't care so much what other people think or believe in, but you should care about how they treat you and what their behaviors towards you are. How are they acting towards you? Are they aggressive towards you? Are they combative? Are they always challenging you? Always challenging you? Never giving you any kind of good feedback, praise, criticism, or a good balance of the two? Okay. Well, why? Talk is cheap, but what are their behaviors like? If someone's always, 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 always harping on you and never has any, anything positive to say, even when you have a great success or win, why is that? I mean, consider this, you know what I'm saying? It's like, generally, you don't need those kind of people in your life, generally speaking. So people's behaviors indicate if they care or don't care. Talk is cheap. Look for their phone calls and slip-ups. What do they say when they slip up? Subtly. You know, subtle shit hurts the most. You know, really it does. So, that was my, uh, 
thing about behavior logging. I'm at the uh, one hour, 20 minute mark. Go ahead and like this shit if you haven't. If you've watched this shit for an hour and 20 minutes and you ain't liked it by now, then fuck y'all. Fuck it. Buy my movies, want your money, baby. So that was my, uh, that's all my notes here so far. Um, I got some other notes about people that I'm going to roast. Uh, that's going to be another separate video. I don't want to get the roast in there. The roast files will come soon. What's the last thing I got to complain about on here today? Um, Asian condoms. Asian size condoms in Thailand. Really? I didn't know to make a note about this. God damn. The condoms here in Thailand are so fucking small. It's like, I don't have a big dick or whatever, but they don't even roll like halfway on my dick. It's like almost like, fuck. Ugh. Try not to wear those motherfuckers, you know? What the fuck? That's another show topic entirely in itself. I just had to make a note about that on the notepad. But that's really about it. Um, For now. For now. For now. So anyway, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go aside, maybe have some pineapple, clean up a little bit, and I'll get back outside. I think the next thing I do will be a motherfucking roast. I don't know who I'm going to roast first today. I'll do some actual work first, and I'll let the roasting begin. I think I might be going to have a shower. I'm a little sweaty hot right now from the fucking uh, thing, whatever. So, anyway, this is Shimmy from The Shimmy Show. Look me up on fucking, uh, I'm on most of that social shit now except for Facebook or whatever. I'm not, I don't like it. A couple of many years ago, they deleted all my pictures and shit like that. I didn't appreciate that shit, so fuck them. Even though Instagram and WhatsApp owned by them, you know, they're a little bit better. I don't have much shit to say on their platforms. But uh, this, this show, this site, whatever, it is... Uh, Everything is mirrored on my own shit. Just Google the Shimmy Show, shimmyshow.com, shimmytriplex.com. It's just a mirror of the YouTube channel. Shit's also on motherfucking paste bin, streamed left, right, backed up. I got all the shit backed up on motherfucking Google Drive, Dropbox, you name it. So these shows will be up forever. They ain't going nowhere. And a little bit of secret for you guys, if you ever go to the website archive.org, you can look up the shimmy show.com, whatever, and you'll see the shimmy show is more than, uh, it's about fucking 12 or 13 years old, actually. I've been doing these shows for a very long fucking time, but the, the old shows and blogs and podcasts, they, you know, servers get deleted, motherfuckers complain, they don't like this shit. One day they're going to take down this show and the whole channel, and it'll all go back up again, but go look up the shimmy show on archive.org, and you'll see some great stories and some great blog entries and some more audio stuff, and you can watch how I progress over the years and it's all me talking the same shit behind the scenes adult video industry stuff life lessons uh adventures and shit so look me up online look me up again twitter shimmy triple x instagram shimmelise mcbeb google me google the shimmy show youtube all that shit and you can find all my shit all right i appreciate you guys this time thanks for listening to me this far uh do your do yourself a favor Share, like, forward to your friends. If you're on the other side of the fence or whatever, forward it to your enemies, all the shares and whatever, help me or whatever. I've actually read that, uh, you know, I have a few organizations against me, by the way. They have people that want to take the shit down already, you know, so, you know, do your best, worst or whatever. It don't matter. You know, these, these little shows, I, they help me think out loud. It's kind of like self-authoring helps you to do whatever. By the way, I have books on Amazon, too. You could just search for my name. Shimelise McBeth, I wrote a couple books. I'll probably write some more. I've actually dropped the prices of my books to the lowest they allow them on there. I think they're like less than $4 now. If you want to look up uh, E-Pimp and Lee Boot and some other old books I wrote. You know, if you write a book when you're 25, obviously you think differently at, tw at uh, 25 than you do at almost 40. So it's like, it's good to look back and reflect and even see how I kind of gaslight myself back when I was married and all that shit and whatever. So... Um, yeah, look me up, man. I'm, I'm there. I'm that nigga. And buy my movies. I want your money, honey. And remember, I used to be 286 pounds, fat as a motherfucker. So that's why I'm always ranting on uh, fat, fat jokes and this and that and six-pack abs now. Because I will say, to, again, um, being fat is a life choice, right? You don't have to be fat. You, you can, if a motherfucker teases you, be like, okay, you're, you're short and you're black and you're this. It's like, okay, you can't do much to change that. But if they get fat jokes, well, I don't get. The, I'm not the brunt of fat jokes anymore. At least now, motherfuckers, oh you big nose, motherfucker, a rap fuck nigga, had some motherfucker here in Thailand talk about some 
you jerry curl ass nigger some motherfucking uh chinese tourists at that from america i was really surprised at that you know so like Chinese people should be the last motherfuckers to throw jokes at black people, by the way. You know, we little motherfucking two and a half, three inch dick motherfuckers most of the time. So I'm like, dude, all right, talk your shit. Cool. I'm going to put the pole in them hoes, bro. <laughs> motherfucking go. How did Jeezy say? Uh, uh, went up in her so deep I had to pay a toll in her. Jeezy put the pole in her. <laughs> what the fuck are you guys doing with a little two or three inch dick, by the way? Are you fucking a bitch like, eh, 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 eh. Nah, nigga. Uh, uh, uh. Nah, eh. You ain't even penetrating the girl. God damn. You should be the last motherfuckers to talk shit about niggas. For real. <laughs> for real talk. <laughs> uh, Asian condoms. Man. Wow. Well, we can talk about the Asian man. I have nothing against Chinese people, by the way. I got a lot of Chinese friends or whatever. But, I mean, that shit's just ridiculous. You know, you just make it, you make it, when you make fun of people's ethnicity and uh, whatever that uh, they have no control over, then it's, like, pretty funny, I think. You know what I'm saying? Real funny. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a ball-headed motherfucker making fun of me because I got hair. You know, like, really? Okay, nigga. Whatever, whatever, all good in the hood. So, anyway, yeah. Nice and hot and sweaty out here. Maybe I'll go sing some karaoke tonight. Go hit the gym. Go swimming on the rooftop pool. You guys have a great time in America or Canada, A, or whatever the fuck you are on the other Western Hemisphere. I'm going to go live my life here. Let me turn this laptop around so y'all could see uh, God's glory or the beautiful motherfucking skyline and shit here. The beach and all that bullshit's over in the background, whatever. You know why? I, I like it here like it here a lot but anyway yeah thank you for listening to the shimmy show buy my movies i want your money honey and uh this has been just another episode more to come i can shit these motherfucking shows out like rabbit turds and pellets and uh maybe i'll start rapping on the next show whatever look at my old shit habisha nigger i'll probably make uh another rap habisha nigger too maybe and throw that on there you know everything that i do by the way it's all it's all designed to help me sell movies, by the way. <laughs> okay. This shit's gonna come back to me. It's more shit to Google. It's just like a big motherfucking funnel. Okay, just motherfucking blogs about cars and black people and white people and social problems and drama and hatred and Indians and Native Americans. Don't think for a second this shit ain't coming back to pay me. Okay? I get I get traffic from a wide variety of sources. And I have haters from a wide variety of sources and fans from a wide variety of sources. Because the more people that hate on me, the more people that don't like me, the more people that make more hoopla about shutting me down, you're also giving me like more customers too. So, you like to see me talk shit, you'll love to see me fuck. Watch me fuck porn stars. Watch me fuck the girl next door. You know what I'm saying? Watch me take this big motherfucking camera and go fuck Becky and Susie and Su Ling and fucking Shaniqua and Shaquanda and Pocahontas and whoever the fuck I feel like. You know what I'm saying? Fuck y'all people. Y'all can all eat a dick far as I'm concerned. And uh, especially Dorian A. Peters, California Bar ID number 261863. He could eat a dick too. I think maybe that'll be the topic of the next roast. Black ass Ray-Ban never. <laughs> Don't mess with me because I know how to shoot. Hey Shimmy Cash. Hey Shimmy Cash. The roast of the ex-wife Geneva is coming soon too. You know, Shimmy Cash got no cash. Yeah, I don't, motherfucker. I ain't got no cash at all. Who needs cash when you have bot and pesos? <laughs> Maybe I live in a society where I don't I don't require that much cash. Maybe that's just the trick. Maybe that's the trick. Maybe my health is my wealth. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I invest what little cash I have in my health and buying BCAA powder and going on vacations and holidays and condos and six-pack abs. And I just like lifting off my shirt to show niggas now, like, hate on me now, nigga. You gonna call me fat? You gonna call me fat, nigga? I'm a fat-ass nigga, dog. I'm fucking fat. I'm fat. But I bet you your bitch wanna fuck me. <laughs> Ah, 
Oh, Lord have mercy, boy. You've been watching The Shimmy Show, y'all. Peace out. I'm happy. And uh, I can talk shit and drop these shows like rabbit turds. Like I said, you know, niggas can't keep up with me. So make your own show. Do what you can if you want to try to stop me. You know, Make your own fucking thing against me if you like. I hope you all do. More shine for me. More fucking shine for me, y'all. So peace and hair grease. I'm out of here, y'all. Y'all have a good one. Thank you for watching, by the way. You guys are wonderful. You girls are wonderful, especially you girls. I love you guys. Out of here, peace.